Hello, hello, and welcome back to the vlog. This is a video that I talked about doing before Vlogmas, and a couple people said they were interested, and then I was like, oh, maybe I'll do it during Vlogmas. And you would think I was like, looking for videos to do when I was vlogging every day, but I never got around to doing it. And now here we are. <laughs> um, I was gonna go over how I did my finances every month. I love to watch other people do budgety things. Maybe that's just like a type A thing. Or maybe that's just like, I like to be on top of my money. <laughs> I'm really into personal finance and budgeting. So if you are also, then hopefully you find this video interesting. And if you're not, maybe this will give you something to think about. Let's give a little bit of backstory. So I am married. I got married in September of 2022. And Mar my husband Mario and I combined our finances after the wedding. Before that, the money I made was the money I made. The money he made was the money he made. And we split all of our bills evenly. But we combined finances when we got married and I set up a whole little system that we follow every month. Basically the way our system works is all of the income that we generate each month goes into a joint checking account. From that joint checking account, we pay off our joint monthly expenses, our joint yearly expenses, and our joint budgeted expenses, which I'll get into what those are in a second. And then any money we have left over after all of those things have been accounted for each month, we split down the middle and we deposit into our personal accounts. Um, so we each still maintain personal checking, savings, credit cards. Like I know I do, I know he does. I don't know what he's doing with his and he probably has no idea what I'm doing with mine. I'm mostly getting my nails done. <laughs> But yeah, so that's kind of how we have it set up. So we have all of the income goes straight into the joint checking account. And then after all of the monthly expenses and monthly costs have been paid from that joint checking account, we get money left over into our personal accounts. And I'll go into what all of those costs are in a second, except for I started recording this and now my battery is blinking. So give me one second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry if it's a slightly different angle. Okay, so the budget is managed by a Google Sheet that I <laughs> stare at every single day. I'm definitely one of those people I like to look at my bank account every single day. I think that the more aware you are of the money you have and where it's going, the better off you'll be. And it helps curb unnecessary spending and there's just not ever any surprises and if there are I'm on top of it. So I thought this would be a good time to make this video because I just set up the spreadsheet for February. It's a copy and paste every month with the exception of there are two months a year where it's slightly different and those months this year are March and August because Mario and I both get paid bi-weekly on the same day and in March and August we get by we get paid three times on that in a month and every other month we get paid twice a month so it's just a slightly different spreadsheet for the march and august months because there's more income coming in and the formula is all just mostly are just divided by three so divided by two but i will put myself in a little corner i imagine and here is our budget so you'll see what i'm saying when i talk about the different costs every month we have the same recurring costs, which are our mortgage and our HOA payment, our electric bill, our gas bill, my car payment for the Tesla and car insurance. I had to buy a new car at the beginning of last year because I got into a car accident. Uh, Mario also got a new car last year, but it was a gift from my father. So our only car payment is on my car, which is really nice. Uh, and then of course we have car insurance. We have our cell phone bill, we pay for, <laughs> and I'm always like on the fence of if we should just like pause these ever, but we pay for HBO Max, Hulu, Spotify and Netflix. We get Disney Plus through a deal with our cell phone bill. We used to mooch Netflix off my parents, but Netflix fucking stopped letting us do that. Anyway, we also pay for AMC passes, although that expense is going to go away at the end of February because we are going to cancel them. AMC passes is this great program. It's $25 a person, unlimited movies, and we do like to go to the movies a lot. So for us, it's worth it because this includes like IMAX, Prime, Dolby and honestly like two tickets to Dolby is already more expensive than the cost of the AMC passes plus there's a great like loyalty point build up program and like last time we went to the movies we got all of our food for free. So the AMC Stubbs program is really great but once we have the baby we recognize that we will not be going to the movies as often and it is $25 a person so it's $50 a month. So AMC passes is going away. Magic keys we're on a monthly bill for that. I don't think I can pause that although that's something else I'd be interested in pausing if it's possible because magic keys is how we get it's basically the disneyland annual pass another place that we will not be going that frequently once the baby is here so 
I don't think that we can pause that unfortunately, but we already have gotten a lot of bang for our buck out of our magic keys for the year. And then we pay for a housekeeper to come twice a month and deep clean the house. So every other Monday I've had the same lady come for ever and she's incredible and she deep cleans the shit out of the house and uh, I always feel better about my life after she's here. So those are our monthly costs every month. We pay those bills. Then you'll see we drop down to yearly costs. So these are recurring charges that come every year and I'll just say what they are and then I'll go over how I deal with that. So we have a Nintendo membership because we play a lot of games on our Nintendo Switch. We pay for Apple TV yearly apparently. Uh, Amazon Prime we pay for yearly. I was like thinking about this when I was going over my monthly costs. I'm like, we have more TV subscriptions than that. Apple TV and Amazon Prime. There they are. We pay for them yearly. Obviously we have home insurance. Uh, home again is the um, chips that are in our cats. So if they were to ever get lost and you were to scan them, we're registered with a program called Home Again. So it links up to our address and our name and our number and all that. Earthquake insurance. This is a yearly expense. It used to be covered by the HOA and they dropped it last year, which is really frustrating because actually our HOA costs did not go down, but we started having to pay for independent earthquake insurance. It's really annoying, but any day now there could be an earthquake. So it's, you know, you gotta do it. We pay for extra storage on our Google Drive. And then of course we have property taxes. We have a card fee, an annual card fee for the joint credit card that we use and taxes, taxes. Last year we owed taxes, but I don't, think we're gonna owe as much this year. I'm not anticipating us owing anything on taxes this year, but I can't be certain. So I just put a number in there to be safe. And if we owe less then great, that's extra money back to us. We owed a lot of money last year because I used to work contract. Now I'm W2, so that's, it's a whole other thing. Don't need to get into how I deal with my taxes. And then we have joint budget costs. We put a certain amount of money away every month for house emergencies and cat emergencies. We don't have cat insurance anymore. Um, I just felt like it wasn't worth it. We have healthy cats at the moment. I have just, I have looked into getting cat insurance again this year. I haven't decided. It's, it's something that I always go back and forth on. In the moment, we just put money away every month. So if God forbid something were to happen, uh, which it has in the past, Tuna has had emergency surgery in the past, we have some money saved up for that. Um, same with the house. If something were to happen with the house, um, like last year our oven died, we had to have someone come out and fix the oven, like stuff like that. We had to get an exterminator last year because we had a spider infestation, like, you know, house, house ownership. We put money aside every month in a savings fund for that. We already have a savings fund kind of built up for emergency, emergency, break glass in, in case of emergency kind of stuff. Like if Mario were, or I were to lose our jobs, we have a savings sort of built up for that. Not only do I account for our monthly costs and our yearly costs, I also account for any savings. Money goes into any joint savings that I account for in the budget before it comes to us for personal use. And then of course we have just joint expenses. So food for groceries. I have a budget for groceries every month. I have a budget for this, I have food socializing miscellaneous. This is like any dates that we go on, uh, more common than not. This is DoorDash. If we're going to uh, get food delivered to us, it would go into the second column. And then the third column is cat supplies. Um, because of that emergency surgery that I alluded to earlier with Tuna that he had a few years ago, our cats are on medicated food that is quite expensive. So it's its own charge. Um, and then of course, like every other month or every three months, we gotta buy more litter. So it's just best to have the cat supplies in their own little category. So those are all of the expenses for the month. It's quite a bit, but it's manageable. And like I said, I'm aware of what they all are. So I have, as you can see, estimated costs. I obviously blocked out what the actual numbers are because that's none of your fucking business. But I have the estimated costs in there. The estimated costs come from, there should be no surprises. Like I should not ever be surprised at what the cost of something is. Um, the only things that I guess are like truly estimated are the like grocery budget and the socializing budget. But like for all bills, I typically know what the price is going to be before the first because uh, it's either the same every month or I can look ahead. Like I can always look ahead at my gas bill. I can look ahead at my electric bill. I can look ahead at my cell phone bill. Car insurance is the same every month, but I always get a heads up if it's about to go up or down. So estimated costs are estimated costs, but there really should be no surprises. And I do, on the first of every month, I look into what the bills are gonna be every month and I put them in that estimated cost category. And then from there I decide how much is gonna go into savings and what we're gonna be saving for that month. So in February, we're saving for the house and the cat. That's kind of what we've been saving for for a while. And then the yearly costs, I have the estimated cost of the yearly expenses. Again, no surprises. This is based off of either what happened last year or you know what I know is coming up this year if it's different. And then I always have that added up and divided by 12 and that goes into our monthly spend 
every single month. So if it's like all of that, I'm gonna make this up. If all of that added up and divided by 12 is $500 a month, then $500 a month is automatically added into what we've spent that month. Even if, let's say in February, none of these yearly costs get incurred, we still have that money like in the account set aside it's being accrued all year long right um we also always have a pad in our account so there's there's theoretically never a time where we're being taken by surprise right like we had to pay our property taxes in january and we had enough money to cover that <laughs> even though it's january it's the beginning of the year and we will continue to like make that back make the cost of that back plus the cost of all the other yearly expenses back by saving that monthly amount in the checking account every month. I hope that makes sense. So all of the estimated costs from the monthly costs, the yearly costs, the food, the cat supplies, savings, all of that goes into a uh, total monthly spend estimate. Um, and this is where the income comes in. So again, Mary and I get paid twice a month. Once we get paid, I put how much we made when it was received. And then this is where there's a couple little tricky little fun formulas. You'll see down here I have payout one and payout two. This is a formula. So payout one is my first income of the month, Mario's first income of the month, minus the total half of the total monthly estimated spend. So I have to make up some numbers here. If the total estimated spend is like five grand, let's say, and then I bring in 2,500 and Mario brings in 2,500 and our first paychecks, well then we're even, right? With our first paychecks, we've covered the total monthly estimated spend. So we would get zero dollars in payout because we've covered the joint expenses for the month. But then in our next paychecks, if we each got another $2,500, well then we've made, and this is all completely hypothetical, these numbers, 10 grand, right, for the month, but our estimated monthly spend was five grand. So there's five grand left over, right? And so then we would split that and we would basically get to take home personally $2,500 each. It never works out that cleanly. Um, but that's just sort of an example of how those payout formulas work. So for payout one, I keep it with the estimated spend. And then once we get our second paycheck, I wait until the end of the month and then I put in the actual spend, which you can see is next to the estimated spend because sometimes we spend less on like groceries. Sometimes the housekeeper doesn't come for some reason. Sometimes we spend more on DoorDash than we intended whatever what have you and so the estimated spend is off for whatever reason so i will adjust the formulas for the payouts and typically i just give us one big payout at the end of the month for whatever is left over after our income has covered all of these joint expenses i have a little total payout monthly extra just in case i am giving us money throughout the month i keep track in this column next to the received and that way i can kind of see like what we've already been paid and if we're due any extra or if I overpaid us and if I overpaid us I just account for that next month I almost never overpay us it's never an issue <laughs> so this is how we do our joint budget now I will say it's not as clean as this because things aren't coming out of like our straight checking account to pay for all these bills and costs we pay for most things with a credit card so the only costs that are coming out of our actual checking account joint checking account are our mortgage our HOA payment our gas bill, our car payment, and I use Zelle to pay the housekeeper, so that also comes out of the checking account. But everything else is paid off with a credit card. So we use a credit card to pay the electric bill, the car insurance, the cell phone bill, the HBO Max, the Hulu, the Spotify, the AMC, the Magic Keys, the Netflix, the Nintendo, the Apple TV, the Amazon Prime, all of that stuff gets paid with a credit card that we just pay off every month. That's, I mean, it's not any really different. It's just that, you know, so we have one joint credit card. We know what to put on that joint credit card because it's whatever is from this spreadsheet. So really nothing gets put on the credit card unless we're like out on a date together uh, or socializing together and we're paying for something or the groceries, the groceries go on the joint card. Um, if we wanna put something on the joint card, that's not one of those things, or that's not on this list, we just have a conversation about it. So for instance, last month we wanted to buy some stuff for the nursery so that I wanted to put on the joint card. So we had a conversation about what was doable and I put some nursery stuff on the joint card. Um, so it happens from time to time, things happen, but um, typically we stick to the budget because the more money we put in the joint account, the less money we pay for individually. So it's kind of just a decision of like, what's worth it for us to pay for individually versus through the joint account if that makes any sense. Alternatively, I also have a spreadsheet running at all times for the things that we save for. So <laughs> the household budget and the cat emergency budget. I have a running total of how much money goes into those accounts 
plus how much money is already exists in those accounts every month and then if there are any expenses i have like a basically in out expense sheet for the house and an in out expense sheet for the cats for example we're about to take the cats on their wellness vet um trips so we will actually have some outgoing expenses for the cats it's hopefully the only expenses we ever have for the cats for their from their emergency fund every year but yeah so i always have an in and out spreadsheet running for that um and then yeah and then i get we get a different amount in our personal account every month and i'm usually able to calculate based off of what i assume we will earn each month what we will receive at the end of the month and i give mario a heads up and i give myself a heads up and that's how we set up our own personal budgets but we have some months that are better than others and i always urge mario to do what i do which is to save as much money as possible and keep your personal expenses low um i keep track of my personal expenses through an app i don't know why i do this on an app or a website rather and not on a spreadsheet i've just i started doing this years ago and i've just never stopped it's called everydollar.com. It's like a fucking Dave Ramsey thing, but you can use the free version. It's really easy. Um, I like to make an every dollar budget, which means every dollar that comes in has is allocated somewhere. So I, at the beginning of the month, I can put down what I anticipate receiving from the joint account. If I'm going to have any miscellaneous income that's individual to me, that rarely happens, but you never know. And if I need to take any money out of savings to cover my costs. So I will make a little budget. Let's see, the things that I pay for individually, I pay for YouTube Premium. Mario has zero interest in YouTube Premium, so I pay for that myself. I pay for an, a subscription to a website called Epidemic Sound. This is so I can have royalty-free music on my YouTube videos. So I pay for that every month. And then I have a little, like, personal, like, cash reserve. So, like, I always give myself, like, a, whatever, depending on what I'm going to be taking in, I give myself a couple hundred bucks to myself to do whatever I want with for the month. And that's pretty much it. I'm really fortunate because of the Tesla, I don't pay for gas. He drives my car almost every single day, but it works out because he gets free charging at his work. So kind of works out. So um, I don't have a ton of personal expenses. Anything left over that I don't spend throughout the month goes straight into a savings. I have multiple savings accounts. I have a personal Roth IRA for my retirement. I have an investment account for savings and I have a uh, just like break glass in case of emergency savings account that I can transfer in and out of my checking account and in, like instantly. So I have three savings accounts so I just kind of allocate money <laughs> towards those three based off of what I take in individually every month. And there are some months where we don't get any money. Where what we, it, we, we take in covers exactly what we spent in the joint but I'm always able to give us a heads up when that happens and that's why each of us have individual savings. You know, when we're lucky, that doesn't happen that often. When we're unlucky, it happens a few months in a row. But for the most part, we get we get a bit of money every month. And that is kind of it. That is kind of it for how we do our finances. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm not thinking of in terms of like where our money goes. No, nope, we have our joint account, our joint credit card. Oh, and then I personally have personal credit cards so like my, that like couple hundred bucks a month that I spend or, or that I give myself to spend gets spent off of my individual I actually have two individual credit cards and I really like them let's talk about the credit cards we have actually my individual credit cards the first credit card I ever got was my Amazon credit card I had the hardest time getting my first credit card I was in my early 20s when I finally got one because I didn't have any credit <laughs> for the longest time I never did anything to accrue credit and finally I was able to, and I tried over and over again to apply for a bunch of different credit cards because I wanted to start accruing points wherever I could. And then finally, Amazon allowed me to get a credit card. You'd think it wouldn't be that difficult, but it was. And so I like my Amazon credit card. The only thing I put on my Amazon credit card nowadays is my Amazon purchases. It gets 5% back on Amazon purchases. I don't make a ton, but when I do, I'm accruing money back essentially. And then like every other month, I'll make a big purchase on Amazon and it'll be covered by the points I, you know, have. So that's a really great credit card if you spend a lot on Amazon. I also have a Southwest credit card. I'd say the majority of my individual purchases go on my Southwest credit card and that has paid for many, many flights. I don't mind Southwest. I like Southwest in fact, um, because I find their airfare to be cheap. And so my points go a really long way uh, for domestic flights. I've gotten us to and from many places for free on my Southwest credit card. And then our joint credit card is a Chase Sapphire card. Um, and like I said, we put tons of stuff on that every month. So we're constantly accruing points and any, any travel that does not get covered by my Southwest card 
gets covered by the Chase card. I don't think we've ever used it for anything other than travel, but it's definitely covered a ton of flights, covered a ton of flights for our honeymoon, covered a flight we recently took to New Orleans because we generally don't think about or touch the points until we need to go somewhere. We only really go places like twice a year, once or twice a year, probably less now with the kids. So we're just constantly accruing points on that card. And then it's like, all of a sudden it's like, oh, we have to go to New Orleans for something. Or like, oh, we want to go to New York City for something. And then boom, we don't have to pay for our flights <laughs> or our hotels or whatever it is that we're going to use the points for. So if you feel like you can be responsible with it, I highly recommend putting all your expenses onto a credit card because making money every time you spend money, basically. But if you can't pay it off, then don't get a credit card because that's not a game anyone wants to be playing. And then, yeah, I really think that's it. I'm looking at everything and that's all we got. I guess the biggest future expense will be adding our kid to our health insurance but you'll notice the health insurance wasn't actually one of our expenses because that just gets taken out of we get health insurance through mario's employer and that just gets taken out of mario's pay every month so it's just like lesser income knowing that like health insurance is being covered we'll just have like even less income when another independent gets added but that's sort of already anticipated by me in the future months to come. My income is about to change because I'm about to go on disability for giving birth and I don't know what that's going to look like yet so I haven't quite figured that out but I'm not super worried. All in all it should be equivalent and if not we just cut stuff from the budget. You know what I mean? If all of a sudden I have to cut Apple TV I should just do that anyway. We fucking... Oh Mario just watched a show on Apple TV. We like we watch just enough things to keep all of these fucking subscription services God damn it, it adds up. Now I'm just complaining about my expenses. Anyway, I have no idea if that was thorough enough, although I feel like I've been talking for a hell of a long time. So before I talk too much longer and have so much more to have to edit, let me uh, close off the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found this interesting. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, I guess. Yeah, if there's any other like financial related videos that I can make that you guys think would be helpful or whatever. I, like I said, I'm really, really into my own personal finance and keeping a tight eye on the money is one of my favorite things. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. My voice hurts. I probably have like the worst vocal fry right now. Love you so much and I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. See you later. What do I say at the end of these? I have no idea. Bye.